Ball A is dropped from rest from the top of a building that is 15.2 meters high, okay? So here's ball A, and what's important is that it's dropped from rest. So it has an initial velocity of zero. And then after ball A has fallen 3.2 meters, so after it's fallen down to this level over here, ball B is then projected vertically upwards from the ground. After a while, the two balls strike the ground at the same time. Okay, that makes sense. So ball B is going to be projected up, and it's going to start turning, and while ball A is coming down, and then eventually they're both going to hit the ground at exactly the same time. So that is a possibility, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to hit the ground at the same velocity. They're just going to hit the ground um, at the same moment, okay? Um, okay, so let's see what the questions ask us. This one looks quite interesting. So the first question says, define the term free fall. Okay, so we've looked at this question a few times, but let's just explain it. Let's say you're holding a ball in your hand, and let's say you, you're you holding this ball in your hand, you're standing on a field, and you throw this ball up into the air. Once that ball has left your hand, and it's no longer in your hand, and it's busy traveling, what are the forces acting on that ball? Now, some of you are going to say there is an applied force, but that is not correct. Remember, there is only an applied force when the ball is in your hand and it is still in contact with your hand. As soon as that ball leaves your hand, there is no longer an applied force. Some of you might say, what about air resistance? And that is actually correct, but in grade 12, we have been asked to ignore air resistance. So the only other force, if you think about it carefully, is gravity. So if you had to do a free body diagram on an object that is moving vertically through the air, there is only going to be gravity. And so what is free fall? Free fall is motion under the influence of gravity only. This question over here says, Calculate the time taken for ball A to strike the ground, okay? So from here all the way down to here. So I'm going to call this my um, final position, and over here we have the initial position. This is where we'll have to use our equations of motion. So we have the total distance, we have the initial velocity, we don't have the final velocity, so let's not use anything with VF. So let's maybe use this one over here. So we can just say, if your first step is always just to go right out the formula, choose a direction as positive. I'm gonna choose down as positive. So what is the displacement? 15.2, that will be positive because we chose down as positive and our starting point is over here and our ending point is over here. So because we are ending up below the starting point and down as positive, then your displacement is a positive value, okay? That can sometimes get quite weird in some types of questions. Now, your initial velocity, we've been told, was, oh, it was zero, it was dropped, okay? Delta T, and then half. Now, uh, your acceleration is gonna be a positive 9.8 because we chose down as positive, and acceleration is always acting down in this chapter, so that we can go positive, and then delta T squared. Now, this part here is just going to fall away because zero multiplied by anything is just zero. So we just end up with 15.2 is equal to, what is half multiplied by 9.8? That's 4.9 delta T squared. So what I'm going to do now is divide by 4.9. And so we divide by 4.9, divide by 4.9. And so here we end up with delta T squared. And on this side, we have 15.2 over 4.9. Now I need to square root that in order to get t by itself. And so I'm just going to go type that all in on the calculator in one step. You see what I did there? I just kept everything like this instead of having to go find all the decimals and all of that. It's a little hack. And so that'll give us 1.76 seconds. 76 seconds. So let's put your 1.76. And there's a whole bunch of other formulas that you could have used, okay? So this one over here now says calculate the magnitude. When they say magnitude, it just means that you don't need to give the final direction. So it says the magnitude of the velocity with which ball B was projected 
from the ground for five marks. The way that I think we should handle this one is the following. We know that ball A has been in the air for 1.76 seconds. We know that that time over there is 1.76 seconds. Okay? Now, when was ball B released? Or ball B, not released, but ball B was thrown up when ball A was here. So what we should do is let's go calculate how long does it take ball A to get to this point. Then we can then we can try to figure out how long is it does it take for ball A to go from here to the ground. Because that time will be the same amount of time that ball B was in the air. Because they told us that ball B was released or thrown when ball A reaches this position and they both stayed in the air for the same amount of time. Okay, so it's gonna be less than 1.76. So we need to go figure out how long does it take ball A to get from here to here. Let's go work that out. Because ball B is only, is only thrown once ball A reaches this point. So let's go figure out how long it takes ball A to get to that point. So we could actually go and use this formula again and we could say, because some of you, I know what some of you might think. Some of you might say, can't we just look at how much this one is and look at how much this one is and then somehow divide to somehow get this smaller for this part? But no, time time is not, um, or position is not a linear thing. Remember, position time graphs, they always have curves like that and like that. So the amount of time to go from here to here is not going to be proportional to the time to go from here to here because it's not linear, okay? If what I just said there was like, wait, what? Don't even worry, it was, maybe that was a bit too much. It's not necessary to understand that. Just, yeah, go calculate the time for this part and don't try to do any dividing with these two numbers or whatever. Okay, so, wow, Kev, why did you have to take it that far, bro? Um, read the room. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, let's carry on. So let's go do this over here. Um, so delta x is equal to v initial delta t plus a half a delta t squared. Now let's keep down as positive. Okay, so we know that the displacement is 3.2. The initial velocity is zero. Acceleration will be a positive 9.8 because we chose down as positive. And then we can do that. Now, once again, this part here falls away, making our life much easier. And so we now end up with 3.2 equals. Now, that's 4.9. Now, I'm just going to divide both sides by 4.9. And so we're going to end up with those cancelling out. So we're going to end up with, um, let's just write this in the next slide. So 3 point in the next part here, 4.9 equals delta t squared. I'm going to square root that. And then we end up with, I'm just going to write it as um, that time over there is 4. I got 4 square root 2 over 7. I'm not going to write the decimals because it's going to be a lot. And we can't round off because that's not our final answer. So 4 square root 2 over 7 is this time over here. Um, this time, let's quickly. So this time here is 4 square root 2 over 7. So what this now means is I know that from here to here, it takes 1.76 seconds. From here to here, it takes that many seconds. So if I subtract these two values, then I know the amount of time that ball A takes from here to here, okay? So I'll call that part there delta t1, and this part here I can call delta t2. So to work out delta t2, I can say 1.76, which was the full one, minus 4 square root 2 over 7, and that'll end up giving us, now it's not the final answer, so don't round off, 0 0.9518779678. Um, seconds. So that is the time for this part. Now that is amazing that we have that time because that time is also how long B is going to be in the air for because they said that B was started moving when A reached this point over here and they both stayed in the air from that point for the same amount of time because they strike the ground at the same time. So B 
is going to be in the air for that long. So now we know B's time. We also know, what else do we know? What else do we know? Oh, we also know, um, okay, we know B's acceleration, of course. And we can also know B's displacement. It's going to be zero. Why? Because B goes all the way up and then goes all the way down. So what's that in displacement? Zero, right? Displacement is how, what is the distance between your starting and your ending position? But if your starting and your ending position is the same place, well, then your displacement has to be zero. Some of you might feel more comfortable calculating how long will it take B to go there, and then you can multiply that answer by two. That also works. So we don't know, we don't know the final velocity of B when B comes back down to the ground. Don't say that it's zero, because it definitely will have a very, it, will, it won't have a velocity of zero at the moment that it strikes the ground again. So let's not use anything with final velocity. Let's go straight for this one over here. Let's see how this is going to work. So we're going to say zero. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let's go write the formula first. Jeez, Kev. Just take it easy, bro. One step at a time. It's like meeting a girl on a date and suddenly you're like, hey, do you want to get married? Just first do a bit of small talk. Yo, Kev. You're making me cringe here, bro. Okay. So let's choose, um, it doesn't really matter, but let's, I think because we kept choosing down as positive, I know a lot of learners prefer to just keep it consistent. So we said the displacement is going to be zero. We don't know what the initial velocity is. That's what we're trying to calculate. The time, well, we know how long B is in the air for. It's that long over there. So 0 0.9518, that number plus a half. Now acceleration will be positive. Why? Because we chose down as positive. And then delta t, oh yes, 0 0.95, that long value, and then squared. Okay, so what we can do now is, I think let's, we're trying to get this by itself. So let's bring all of this over to the left. So we'd end up with negative, and then this long number squared, and then that's equal to this over here, that long number. Okay, so if I go type in this part on my calculator, or well actually, let's do a little hack. We know that we're going to have to divide by this to get the VI by itself. So we're going to end up with this long number squared divided by the long number. So if you're comfortable with maths, you might even think, oh, you can just cancel, and then you'd be left with one of these. But I think just if you want, just go type it like that on your calculator, and that's equal to the initial velocity. And obviously you can do this in totally different ways. You don't have to write it out the way I'm writing it. I'm just trying to, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. So I find little ways to make my life easier instead of having to write out so many things. But as a student, you might not be comfortable with that. And that's perfectly fine. Okay. And so we do get a negative answer, which is understandable. I'll explain why now. And we should end up with negative 4.66 um, meters per second, but they just wanted the magnitude. So now you can just say, okay, that doesn't look very nice. So we can just say um, that that velocity will be a positive value of 4.66 meters per second. You don't need to say up or down because they just want the magnitude. But the reason that we got a negative answer was because we chose down as positive, but B is clearly going to be thrown upwards. Okay, now for the next question, it looks like it is a position position time graph. Okay, how much fun is that going to be, hey guys? I'm just joking. I know you guys don't like graphs. <laughs> but let's see if we can make it as easy as possible. Just trying to clear up a bit of space here. I can just hear some of you saying, Kevin, wait, I was busy writing that down. Guys, just pause the video. Okay, so what do they want? On the same system of axes, draw position time graphs to show the motion of bore A and bore B from the instant that bore A is dropped. Okay. Now, what's important when you draw these graphs is what you decide as positive. So if, for example, um, I'll show you both of them over here. Okay. So they've asked us to show that the, take the ground as the zero position. So if your ground is the zero position, so let's quickly, um, yeah, so if you have ground as the zero position, then then if you choose upwards as positive, then what that means for a position graph is anything above your 
zero position is positive and anything below your zero position is negative, okay? That's important. If you chose down as positive, and I'll show both, then anything below your zero position is positive and anything above is negative. Okay, so I'll show you the, the one where we choose upwards as positive first. Um, let me just quickly give you the basics and then I'll go through it in detail. So obviously you would have a X and a Y axis where your X axis is time um, in seconds and then your Y axis is position in meters. Now, it says that anything, and then remember they asked us to choose the ground as the reference. So this is the ground. So it says anything above your zero position is positive. Now, can we agree that all of this is above the ground, right? And the ground is our zero position. So that means our entire graph is going to take place above, okay? If we chose downwards as positive, and as I said, I'm going to show you both. If we chose downwards as positive, then it says that anything below the zero position is positive, and everything above the zero position is negative. But we know that everything did happen above. But because we're choosing down as positive now, it says that anything above your zero position is actually going to be negative. So our graph is actually going to happen down here, if you chose down as positive for this graph. By the way, for all of the previous questions, we chose um, down as positive, but you are more than welcome to now for the graph, choose up as positive. Okay, but let's go get to the graphs now and let's start drawing. Ball B only gets dropped a few seconds later or a few split seconds later. Okay, until the time that it reaches the ground. Okay, so let's just ignore ball B for now. Let's just do ball A. So it says take the ground as the zero position. Oh, okay, when they say that, then we can um, we can do our graph like that because this is the ground and you're not gonna go under the ground, okay? Um, unless you're a mole. Okay, that was stupid, <laughs> okay? So let's, just, let's go, um, let, oh, I just said we don't need to do that. Okay, let's do time. Oh, we can make this a little bit bigger, hey kids? There we go, my dude. No need to save paper, yeah. Time, and then um, here we can do position. Yeah, let's do position, and that's measured in meters. Right, and this is the ground. They've told us to use this as the ground. So we know that bore A doesn't start on the ground. Bore A starts 15.2 meters up, so we can just say 15.2 meters up. Okay, now all that's going to happen is that ball A is literally just going to fall. How does it fall? Does it go like this? No. Like, does it go like that? No. On a position graph, it's always a curve. So it starts off falling slowly, so maybe like that, and then it just gets faster and faster and faster and faster, like that. So that would be for A. Now... What about, and we'll fill in all the times and all of that juicy information just now, but let's just quickly um, think about ball B. So we know that ball B starts on the ground. So ball B is gonna start somewhere over here. We're not gonna put it over there because then we're saying that ball B starts at the same time that ball A started, but that's not correct. Ball B starts a little bit later, so let, let's maybe put it there, okay? Now what is ball B gonna do? Well, ball B is gonna be shot up into the air so in the beginning, it goes very fast, and then it begins to slow down. So it's going to do something like that, okay? And then ball B is going to start falling again, and it's going to fall and hit the ground at the same time that ball A hits the ground, like that. You see how they hit the ground at the same time? So that's B's curve. And you see how I didn't start it immediately? Because ball B did not start at the same point. So we don't put it from here, okay? Now, let's see that we've added all the correct things. It says, clearly indicate the following. The starting time for each ball. Okay, so this will be zero seconds for this one. And then this one, when did this one start? Hmm, where did we work that part out? Oh, yes, that was um, at this time over here. So let's just quickly type that in our calculator to get a more nice number. 0 0.808, so let's just put that as 0 0.81 seconds, okay? What is the initial position of each ball? Yes, we've done that. We did 15.2 for this one and we did zero for this one. Yes, 
the time when the balls strike the ground. Okay, so that was this time over here. And we got that as, oh yes, they both strike the ground at this time over here, which was 1.76 seconds. Now, just quickly wait. I know a lot of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Ball B didn't go in the air for 1.76 seconds. I know. If you look carefully, if you just look at the time between these two points, if you had to go work that out, then that would only be 0 0.95 seconds, which is what we got over there, okay? So, but they both hit the ground. From the very beginning, if, if you were holding a stopwatch, you would see them both hitting the ground there. But I'm not saying that ball B was in the air for that long. Ball B started over there and ended over there. So if you look at the time between that, it's 0 0.95, okay? Hope that makes sense. And then that's all we need to show. Okay, now if we choose, if we choose down as positive, Okay, so let's go restart that. So we now have our ground, our ground is still there. This is still gonna be the x-axis called time, and we still have the y-axis called position measured in meters. Okay, so for bore A, we know that it starts at 15.2 meters, but now it's gonna be negative 15.2, because it says anything below the zero position, none of this is below the zero position, it's all above the zero position because um, it's above the ground. So we have to look at this part. Anything above is going to now be negative, okay? So our graph's going to go there, and then the ball's just going to fall like it did to the ground, okay? Well, let's make it a bit wider there. Now for ball B, it starts on the ground, and then it's just going to do this now. Whoops, let's make that a bit better. Ah, come on, Kev and then they're gonna hit at the same time. Now, the times are all gonna be the same. So this will be 0 0.81, 0 0.81, and then this one over here, we got that one as 1.76 seconds, and then this will be B, and then this would be A.